What's up, Military Millionaires? I'm your host, David Bray. Today, we have an exciting episode about coaching and mentoring for real estate agents and real estate investors, as well as a little bit about Airbnb with Ruben Garcia, the proven by Ruben real estate coach, who is a very successful guy. I got to meet him. Uh, you know, I've gotten to know him through some very high level mutual friends. And uh, it's going to be an exciting episode. If this is your first time listening, thanks for joining the community. This podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment. Show notes are found at frommilitarytomillionaire.com slash podcast. Now relax and enjoy the show. You're listening to the Military Millionaire Podcast, a show about real estate investing for the working class. Stay tuned as we explore ways to help you improve your finances, build wealth through real estate, and become a person that is worth knowing. But first, a word from the sponsor for this episode. Hey guys, on this podcast we talk a lot about the roadblock to success for military members in getting started in real estate investing. For many of us, the barriers of time, location, and not having the right knowledge keep us from building wealth while serving our country. Well, let me tell you about Storehouse 310 Ventures. They get it. Storehouse 310 Ventures is owned by two active duty naval officers that love to make investing fun, lucrative, and have a passion for education, theirs and yours alike. They offer full turnkey rental properties in a market where the numbers make sense, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, Milwaukee, home to the almost 2018 division titled Milwaukee Brewers, the well-known Miller Brewing Company, and a lot of delicious cheese. Storehouse 310's properties are fully renovated, leased, and have property management in place. Through their rigorous analysis and selection process, they do everything possible to ensure each rental property meets their high standards and offers fantastic returns. Storehouse 310's allows you to invest with confidence while you are living out of state. They have a network of lenders, insurance companies, contractors, a title company, and much more to serve you all along the way. There is absolutely no reason not to get started when you have the right teams and system in place. David and Stu, the owners of Storehouse 310, have been investing themselves for over 15 years. They are on a mission to help as many active duty, reserves, and military veterans create financial freedom through the power of real estate investing. They are honest, transparent, and they prioritize service and giving. They have even committed to give the first 10% of their profits to partner nonprofit organizations that support veteran causes. For more information about their program, send an email to podcast at storehouse310turnkey.com. Again, that is podcast at storehouse310turnkey.com. Tell David and Stu you heard about them through the Military Millionaire Podcast, and they will get you going down the right path. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dave, and I'm here with Ruben Garcia, otherwise known as Proven by Ruben, who is, he's not military. He wanted me to make sure that everyone knew that because he's in a big military market. However, he, Huge. I got to know him because he coaches a friend of mine who is military. I've had her on the show earlier, Shelby Osborne, and he is a real estate coach, mastermind for agents, also does some investing, uh, you know, got to sit down in the cool kid seats at the 10X Growth Con. And uh, yeah, I just excited to finally get a chance to talk to him, pick his brain a little bit. So Ruben, thanks for joining us. Of course, of course. Thank you so much for having me, dude. I'm gonna enjoy this. Yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about your story. Starting when? Tell me when to start and I'll Ooh. jump on in. Uh, when you first got into real estate. I mean, you could go from birth to gotcha. conception, but that might be, I don't know if we got that much time. <laughs> Let everybody be like, God dang, is this thing going to end? Um, we don't even right, so, Yeah. And signing off. <laughs> um, no, so, uh, uh, so getting into real estate. So I worked at UPS for 12 years. So every one of my friends went into the military because I'm outside of Fort Bragg. I had an opportunity to start at UPS when I was 18. So I said, that might be a good gig. So I jumped in, was there for 12 years until it finally hit me that I was like, there's got to be something bigger out there. There's got to be something better out there. There's no way that I'm fueling trucks and that's why I was born, right? <laughs> and a couple of friends said, hey, you would be good in real estate and, or you'd, you'd be good in sales. So they were like, you should sell phones. You should sell cars. And I was like, I'm going to sell something. It's going to be a freaking home, right? It's going to be the, one of the biggest things that I could sell. Used so that's cars. what initially, yeah, used car salesman, which by the way, if, you know, in the long run, I kind of want to run that game. I bet I could be a top salesperson on the uh, on the floor of some uh, uh, dealerships around our area. Yeah, but I talk um, smack. But that's I what got me into sales, and that's what got me into real estate. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you got into real estate and you obviously became quite good at it. What, uh, man, I don't know how to ask that question. Like what made you successful in, in real estate? But um, like, how did you go from being an agent? Cause a lot, you know, there's a lot of people who start as an agent and they just give up, but obviously you went so mm-hmm. far the other way that you are now doing masterminds and coaching. Um, you know, when did you kind of realize that that was more like going to be your gift than, yeah. however I would ask that question. I, yeah. I think a lot of people, I think life has a way of showing you what you would be best at, right? You have to recognize it and be willing to walk through that door though, no matter how uncomfortable it is. Um, and, and when that, mo- when that time came to me was my very first year, I helped uh, someone, is, all right, there was one agent, one admin, and I came on and they wanted to build a team. All right. Very first year as a real estate agent, wanted to grow a team. Well, we grew that team to do over 12 million in production our very first year. And this is our price point at like 150, 150,000. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what I learned from that is one, you can't, well, we, I know I can't, I, ca- I couldn't do that alone. Right. We needed buyer's agents. We needed listing specialists. We needed admin to handle the 80% work. And as I was helping grow that, I started to learn, man, I, I enjoy this coaching, holding people accountable, making sure that they reach their goals, no matter what it takes, um, throughout that whole process. So that was my very first year in real estate. And we were able to do that. Um, I hired a coach, a business coach at that time to kind of push me. And, and I just started to understand and get the feel of like, man, I want to be there to mentor people. I want to be there to grow people. I want to be there to help them find the gaps and help them break their own systems so we can make it better. Like I just started enjoying it. And then, um, shortly after that became the CEO of that office had about 120 agents rocked that world, broke all time records every month and then rolled out of that and started my own coaching program. Man. So you, you went from being Nick, the new guy with three people to 120. How, how long did it take to grow that? Like how many years are we talking here? One year for the 12. Yeah. So the, so the office, so the office actually held that team that we helped them grow. Okay. Right? So I decided to leave the team and step into the CEO position. Of, all right. And they had about 120 agents, but we broke profit share records. We broke or all time records. We broke closed units, uh, volume. I mean, we, every month we crushed it. We crushed it. We had a good job, but that was where I started feeling as if, man, this is my team now, 120 agents. How can we lead them to break goals? How can we lead them when everyone says the market's down? How can we push them harder than before? Like I just started filling the niche for that and and really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. And then you stepped into the coaching world, which is, I I think that's a lot of fun. Honestly, sales is awesome. Houses, you know, all that stuff, but for some of us, and it's definitely not everybody because it's a love-hate sometimes, teaching and coaching becomes more fun because it's, mm-hmm. it's almost – so I got the chance when I was a recruiter, uh, I don't know, three years ago now. Uh, I went from being, at, at the time, the top guy in my little office of you know, four or five. I was one of the top guys in the state, um, and I jumped into being the staff into I see the, the boss of the four or five guys. And – it's a different, it's definitely a weird transition to go from like, okay, I'm enlisting all these guys and, and you guys aren't carrying your weight to, oh, I'm not enlisting all these guys now. Uh, where are we going to enlist them from? <laughs> um, but right. I had a lot of fun starting to analyze numbers and metrics and uh, all that stuff and getting to show people where they're failing and, and helping them out and watching them do better. And I actually, I don't know, I think I enjoy that part more, but some people get into that role and they're like, nope, uh, uh-uh, nope, send me back to where I'm just in charge of myself. So, nope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yep, yep. into that is, and I'm sure it's a little different too, because, you know, in your market, I would like to think that you have some, some more motivated clientele because they, uh, they want to be a real estate agent. Not, not all recruiters want to be a recruiter. They, uh, they get voluntold as we say, but. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and there's an art to, and yeah, man, we have a great pool here. I mean, we have talented people here like Shelby Osborne, right? I mean, this is the home of the 82nd and special operations and 
and I mean, we just got a great community, right? Like that could, that are, are, are mission based and, and know what they want and no excuses. And yeah, man, we got a great pool to pull from for sure. But the ball and told stuff, one thing that we had, I know I had to sharpen as I started helping people is to not truly ball and tell them, right? Because if they fail, then they're going to blame me and not themselves. And so f to put them in a position for them to take on that extreme ownership, you have to ask the right questions to where they buy in on what that goal is or what the result will be. Does that make sense? That's one of my favorite books, Extreme Ownership. Great book. <laughs> yeah, I, yep, that's I just- a great book. Absolutely. All right, so what's your, what's your favorite, uh, there, here's a weird one. What's your favorite setting as far Let's as coaching, coaching mastermind? Like from a coach's perspective, do you prefer doing like a, a group conversation or like one-on-one -on -one coaching or like what's your, what's your, your favorite aspect of being a coach? You don't ever get to ask the coach that. Yeah. So I like them both. However, one-on-one -on -one for me is the jam. I mean, because you have so, and this is going to sound, uh, you know, it's going to sound a little weird, but I keep a box of tissue because people will break down. They will break down. Dude, I mean, they were just blah because of, of personal or professional uh, challenges that they're having. And in a group setting, I mean, how deep can you really get with someone on an individual basis, right? One on one, man, you can keep going and tell me more about that and tell me more. And they're like, and it starts breaking, they're like, blah, right? But at least you found out uh, something so deep that you know they want to go, that you know, you can kind of hold that and say, you don't ever want to go back to that place. Or it was a cry of like pure dang excitement of things that they can accomplish. And you're like, let's get more of that. Like, let's 10x that. Let's multiply that. Right. So one on ones for me is the jam. I, I dig one on ones. Yeah. I get most of my energy from one on ones like this. I'm getting tons of energy from you, man. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, I never had tissues, but uh, it was like a thing of pride if you could get someone to tear up because it meant you really found their, their like their super need or motivator. And I'll never forget this one kid. It was like one of my first few interviews and he's like in there with his parents and he's like sobbing and I'm sitting there as, and I'm a recruiter and I'm like, uh, what do, what do I, what do I do now? Like, what did I do to this kid? But afterwards, like my boss is like, no, that means you did everything perfect. You had like, he completely gave you everything. <laughs> you made him cry. I'm like, Oh, Oh, that's a good thing. Um, but, it, but you know, I mean, it is cause yeah. if you can get someone mm -hmm. to that state, yeah, and I say that like that's a jerk thing. Like if you can get them there, but you know, if, if they open up that much and they're that vulnerable with you, you've got trust, you've got rapport, and you found the real heartstring. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and and on the surface level, do you, does society truly want to dig deep in someone's world? Right? They don't get asked those questions on a daily day daily day basis. They don't, they don't get asked to go deeper. They don't get asked to tell them more. So what about that's important to them? Like, what about that hurt them the most? Like, they just don't know. Unless you're surrounding yourself 24 seven with multipliers, they don't have those conversations, right? So it's going to take some peeling back for them to go yeah. deep. They're just not used to it. But when they do, you know, you've tapped into something, right? Yeah, you don't get yeah. much uh, conflict either. It, it, people just aren't, yeah, they're used to just kind of, going going by in their own little world and mm -hmm. so just autopilot i am curious maybe this will be a useful question for for the audience what kind of trends do you see like as far as agents and, and sales like what uh, do you notice any trends for like wow nobody's any good at this or uh <laughs> maybe not that way but uh, uh so trends in real estate agents putting effort into it or so just like things that you focus on that you're like wow man there's a lot of people who don't understand x or that don't do like is there anything trend wise that you would say like man a lot of people uh, are not any good at this and this is this would really help them out yeah 100 percent. so i have so there's a few things that that i do first like have you ever heard of the disc assessment i love it love it so that would tell Probably me a lot about Probably because mine came back saying like good things. Um, I'm yeah. Like, I'm, I can't remember the numbers, but I'm like a 90s I and like a super high D too. So I'm okay with that. Right. Right. Exactly. So 
that'll help me analyze the the person. I won't lean all hundred percent on it, but it, it will help me lean on the lean on uh, if they're good in sales. Are they good on the back end? Are they good on certain admin positions? You know, that'll help me from the very beginning to know if they're hitting a wall in sales. Maybe sales isn't their jam. Like the, I've coached people out of the coaching program, right? And 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 not to be a dick, but it was there. It was better for them to be in a different position on a real estate team that they can thrive on, thrive in, um, versus in the front line sales. Um, so I would say having that conversation definitely a trend. Everybody that gets into real estate thinks that they're going to be an amazing salesperson or or the their family their environment says, man, why aren't you crushing it in real estate? Why aren't you doing a good job? And and maybe they were never even they were sitting in the wrong seat of the bus, right? And so having those conversations at first definitely trend. Um, and you'll have people that thank you afterwards, like didn't want to hear it, but thank you because I'm crushing it in this role and they're getting bonuses and, and some of them need that security. They're getting uh, um, paid every month, you know, and it's different than a commission job. So having that first and then second um, mindset, or I should really say that's first is, is having mindset conversations and uh, calendar though, to get more specific, like of, um, tangible stuff is, is following the calendar and building out your calendar and stick into your calendar, right? Like that is right there. I've hired my own coach and, and my coach is like, you can't write a book on just that, but I'm just always like, dang, that's the one thing that always comes up is they're allowing what they call uh, distractions into their world and disrupting their time. So they can't focus on something, which is an excuse. And they're allowing that they're setting that substandard, go back to extreme ownership, right? They're setting that substandard in their calendar. Um, but how do you protect it? What do you plug into it first? You know, these are the, some of the stuff that I, I help them with at first. Yeah, that's actually, you know, it's funny. And I have not stuck to this as much lately because I'm getting ready to move. But my little like weekly, I'm going to do X, Y, Z through the days and big key things. Because uh, I remember, mm -hmm. so on recruiting, you know, they preach about a, a monthly plan and then a weekly plan and then a daily plan to hit your metrics. And, and you know, we did it, but it was always kind of like, whatever. And when I became the boss, what I started doing, and this is, I guess, what you're supposed to do anyway, uh, but no one had ever told me that's what we were supposed to do because it wasn't what we did at the time. Um, I started every single morning. It was like, hey, we show up to the office at, we're, we're one of the better stations, so we did not show up early because I was like, the kids aren't even awake at 8 in the morning, so why why do we need to be here? Let's go to the gym. But uh, we'd show up at like 8.30, and we would sit down for 30 minutes to an hour with the whole team, and everyone had their daily plan, and we would just go like line by line, and I would sit there and go, nope, take that off. We're doing this, and take that off. We're doing this, and you know, okay, we need to do this. What are the top three things for you? What is, you know, and I'd give them missions and whatever. Um, and tell them like, hey, you're behind on phone calls, you're behind on this, you need to do more here, you need. And we went from, when I took over, we were, we had just hit a really rough patch and we were not, I don't want to say sucking chest wound, but I mean, we were a, a, a drag on all the other stations. And by the time I left 12 months later, we were so far ahead that we could have missed mission two months in a row and still been stationed a year, I think. Um, and, and, and it's not because I did anything amazing, but I think that, was probably like the number one thing was to be able to say, look, dude, you were supposed to make 300 phone calls this week and it's the third day of the week and you've made 10. So you need to make 150 phone calls today and figure it out and being able to like do that because nobody likes cold calling. They're going to find a reason not to cold call. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, breaking it down to daily metrics is, is, is key. I mean, there's so much clarity in that and, and the activities you need to do. But going back to the disc assessment, man, we find that there is some there's some people who love the cold calling, right? It, it just depends on the their personality and 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 the, the kind of the sta stability that comes behind that with a paycheck and 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 have some hard skin. So, um, yeah, no, I get it with cold calling, and I get it with uh, breaking it down to a daily metrics. Huge huge brings a lot of clarity in your world because it's a contact sport it's a contact sport you got it's it's people people relationships right so how many of those relationships are you building on a day-to-day -day basis it's huge yeah. yeah absolutely and and to build those relationships generally takes some stuff that you kind of got to get forced into doing rather than just i mean not everybody just likes to meet people all the time so sometimes right. and, and you know like you said 
you've got to, I almost wish we could do the disc assessment for recruiters. I think we'd be much more effective, but I don't think they'd approve that because eventually recruiters would be like, okay, uh, now I got to say this on this test. So like they would, someone would find a way right. and say, like my eye is zero. Cannot talk to people. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I would read a book on calendar. If you ever write one, I'm just saying. Dude, I, I was thinking about calling it. If you know, I got this abundant mindset, so I don't mind telling the, the title, but I was thinking like the freedom structure because so many people see it as structure. Like it's going to be something that, that shackles them and holds them down and they have to follow this schedule. And it's like, no, there's a, sh a shoot ton of freedom in the structure, right? If you just follow the structure, there's a ton of freedom behind it, but there's ways that um, I started coming up with that can help eliminate what needs to truly be in your calendar. Because some of those tasks that you were talking about at first, I mean, I would, I would write a who, I would write the, the word who next to each one of those. And some of those may be you. But hold each one of those tasks accountable, like, like you and I were talking before we jumped on, and what's the dollar per hour activity, right? And raise your dollar per hour activities by putting a different who next to it, because you, you might find that has, it, you don't belong next to that, right? It's something that we could leverage off. So put a who next to all those tasks as well, for sure. Write that down. I hope I'm answering your, your answers or your questions correctly, get me all hyped up. No, I, I appreciate it. I like it. This is the kind of stuff that I like to hear because it's all stuff that I, I really, I need to hear because I'm doing a really terrible job about farming stuff out to my virtual assistant. I got a call with her on Monday so that I can, cause I, I, I realized like, man, she's helping me so much. There is so much more that I need to hand over to her. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's what we're going to try. Yeah. And would she be glad to, to take on that extra work? I think so. Would she get paid more or is it going to still yeah, be the yeah, yeah. We're kind of doing uh, hourly for now. Tested it out. Got hourly, it. Got it. And, uh, profit and what, what do you think she's using that money for? Uh, I think she's using it like saving it to invest. Uh, so we met and she's, she's going to listen to this and you're going to get me all, all like in trouble and stuff. Um, we, we met with, uh, <laughs> I was actually, I'm test piloting some coaching program. And so her and her husband uh, were one of my, I don't want to use, I guess, students. I don't know. Uh, they were, they were helping me test pilot it. And uh, afterwards they were like, she was, she reached out and said, you know, I have some copywriting skills and some skills with this, this, and this. Uh, and you mentioned time. I'd love to help you out. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I was like, at the time I was looking into hiring a virtual assistant anyway, but I'm a Marine and we're very stubborn and we like to do things ourselves. And which is funny, I'm really quite good at delegating in my job. <clears throat> But when it comes to this, like it's been fun for me to like just do everything myself and learn how it works. And then once I'm having fun and learning it, it's hard for me to say, okay, now that I understand it, let me turn it over because I'm I, I'm struggling with that piece because I'm kind of enjoying, like I enjoy producing this podcast and editing it and typing out the show notes and uploading it and tagging everything and all that for SEO. That's kind of fun to me now. It's a huge waste of my time right. though, and I need to shove it off. And so, but it's hard for me to do that because I'm like, oh, but, you know, but it's kind of fun. But the reality is, it's kind of fun because it's keeping me from doing the less fun stuff that I have to do. Uh, so I'm, mm. I'm finally starting to make that transition happen. But man, it's not as easy as yeah. I thought it would be. Yeah. Well, what's cool? So, so take yourself out of the the uh, equation, right? So for her, it's she's going to be collecting the money to invest, right? And to invest in stuff that's going to what benefit her family, probably correct. Yeah. So think about that, right? So think about like, damn, by you doing that, by you leveraging that stuff to her, then you're not only impacting your world and your family, you're impacting her world and her family by bringing in leverage and allowing that stuff to go into her world, right? But you got to take yourself out of that equation and just see the impact that you will create. Although it may seem like so small of a thing, dude, she's saving the money to invest to impact her family. And on the other end of that, you can stay in your 20% where you start bringing in more income to impact your family as well. I hadn't thought about it that way. If you're listening mm. to this, if you're listening to this, our conversation on Monday hopefully will go well, except that by the time this comes out, it'll be our conversation that happened like a couple weeks ago on Monday. So 
Well, then so, good. This is her chance to hold you accountable, right? <laughs> oh, she does. She's awesome. Um, <laughs> good. Man, I, she, so she does some proofreading and editing for me, and it's great. because she, So she's not military, and she has, like, no military background, which is honestly a huge blessing in disguise because, like, I'm writing – I'm about to post like a four week series on the VA loan, like, cause nobody seems to understand the VA loan. So I'm going super into the weeds and she's been editing and she's like, none of this makes any sense for me. Like, I don't understand this, this, and this. You did a terrible job explaining it. I'm like, okay, thanks. Because I'll get, I'll get wrapped up in the military jargon. And although it's more geared towards military, I need to make it, you know, if, if a, a non-military can't understand it, then I'm doing a poor job explaining it. Right. Even if it was to a military guy. So I need to break that down. So that's probably saved me a lot of trouble because what good is writing a nice four, four piece series if nobody knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so my mind goes like, man, what if you built two versions, one for strictly military and one for anybody who intends to get in the military could read this to help them into the V. I mean, because dude, like, you know, the investing world, you know how powerful a VA uh, loan could be. Right. So that could be for the people who inspire to not only get into mil the military, but also inspire to be an investor, right? So breaking it down for them, but also running that military play, you might have two versions. Not a bad idea. I like it. I need to make a video one of these days where I just use like, think of like how to use every military acronym I can come up with and try to make it a, 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 a nice, funny video that only someone in the military would understand and only use acronyms and not explain any of them. Okay. Um, and see, see if we can pull it off. Because you know we yeah. have a whole language of acronyms. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Terrible. Or alphabet soup. Anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, so the calendar thing is awesome. I appreciate the, the, little, the little chat. Look at that. You bring someone on who talks coaching, and all of a sudden you're getting some, some coaching out of it. What a weird. I know, it's awesome. So, uh, man, where, what do you, where do you want to – are you trying to – I guess here's a – an interesting one what's the future for ruben where are you trying to go uh so there's no try right you got to go there you're not going mm -hmm. there um so what i'm looking at is uh i'm looking at building a which is why this podcast is perfect is building a much more passive income business versus active because coaching is active you know it is very active um i was capped out last year about 52 clients doing one-on-ones um so this year scaled back a lot after the 10x growth con um because i got i got mind punched by a lot of people there so building a better passive income business is what i'm focused on this year and what you and i were talking about a little bit was more into the airbnb world in my market um that's going to bring in the passive income and with that being that property pretty being a plan B to go long-term just in case Airbnb gets punched in the mouth in my market. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to be real estate have more focused on real estate than where I'm at right now and building passive income. So I can go coach whoever, whenever I want to. So how do you make Airbnb passive? Yeah. So that's a great question, right? Cause I've talked to a few people in my market and they said, yeah, we love Airbnb except we have to wash the towels. We have to replace the toilet paper. We have to clean the coffee dispenser. We have to blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, that sounds not passive at all. Um, matter of fact, that sounds very active. So that is what I'll stay away from. And that was a mistake, right? Because I allowed someone else's world to impact mine in a negative way. Yep. And so what I did was add a while, a little bit, uh, give it some time. I started asking more questions and then found who I told you about earlier, a guy named Toby who actually manages these Airbnbs and I'm hands off. All I do is get a check every month. I mean, he does everything. He's got everything planned out. So right now for, there's a few reasons why I like the Airbnb. I like that inspections are freaking weekly versus where it was with the long term, right? And, and how much damage some of these tenants have done. Um, I love that that they're in the property a lot more and the return is 2x to 3x than what I'm getting um, right now. And I just started with Airbnb. I bet I can get more than that. Yep. Um, but right now, uh, that's the passive income play. Yeah. I love it. And that's what I was hoping you would, you would go with. So there's, I hear a lot of people talk, like there's some guys out there with some pretty crazy Airbnb strategies where they can almost get the person who rented to 
clean everything for them by saying, you know, hey, if you do X, Y, Z, then I'll charge you this much less or whatever. Uh, but the idea of hiring out a manager, you know, it's, it's just like a property manager. So many, so many people will avoid hiring a property manager because they don't want to pay the 10%. And I, I get that, you know, whatever, but I pay my property manager and I focus on my rentals like an hour a month. So for me, yeah. my, my rentals are now like a $1,500 a month or $1,500 an hour task because I take like one hour a month when they're bringing in around $1,500 a month right now. And, you know, as I scale that, that's only going to get better because I'm not doing anything. At this point, when I go home this month, I'm going to say, hey, you know, I, I've been paying my mortgage payments and my utilities payment on this one property. Um, and I know you're paying everything else. You want to just, here's the account numbers. You want to just pay these ones for me too. And now I've gone from an hour a month to like 45 minutes to balance my books once, um, which I could farm out, but I, yeah. I, I enjoy the Excel doc account balancing piece. And for 45 minutes, I, I think I can justify that. But uh, sure, I don't understand why people won't systemize these things. Like that's how you scale. And that's, I, it's, Cool. Um, so I'm glad you found a way to do that. Uh, yep. Yep. <clears throat> what do you, what's been something? Yeah. So, I mean, oh. yeah, I was just going to say, you know, for me, I was, a t I, look, I tried running that play. I was like, I can manage this property. No worries. Yeah. Um, I let my buddy move in and uh, they tore up the place, said they would, they would, they would clean up whatever their pets did, that was a lie. I ended up being like three pets in this property, destroyed the property. I was terrible at collecting the money. Like it was, I was just terrible at it. So I said, this is one thing I need to leverage. Um, so I ended up doing that, but it's the best thing because for me, it's, it's a lot more passive, right? I don't have to spend the time on it. And the fee, the 10%, the 12%, the whatever percent is, is a write-off for me. I mean, it's just going to help me beat up that tax bill that's going to be coming at the end of the month so or end of the year so or quarterly or however it's done in your world but dude i i want passive i want passive my goal is passive and i'm willing to pay for the time to to break off and spend more time with my family to break off spend more time coaching break off spend more time on a podcast right <laughs> to get my message out there i, I sell these t-shirts with Which every state yeah, so like I can focus on getting this stuff out there, right? Instead of managing the properties, and I'm I'm 100% one I suck, and two I'm 100% okay with leveraging it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and in, in life, right, you got to decide if you want to pay for time or not. And I think that anyone who's trying to scale, paying for time is the way to go. They talk about, you know, people 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 avoid coaches, right? People avoid. Oh, I don't need a coach. Show oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you don't, there's, I mean, yeah, sure. You can figure it out on your own, but you know, it might take you a decade. Um, whereas you can get a coach who will punch you in the gut right away and you take that decade and turn it into a year. Well, I'll take that. Yeah. Any day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't what, I don't know, five, six, seven months when I was in real estate, so I decided to hire my own coach. Couldn't even afford it. Put it on a credit card. And they literally squeeze time for me, right? I was able to accomplish so much because of what they've already done. They just showed me the path. Um, was it a year ago? I had three coaches because <laughs> that's how messed up I am um, to, to show me the path. And I've been in real estate not even five years, right? Was able to help grow that team was able to help uh, grow that, that, that office. And by the way, it's not me, right? I had a great team with me as well was able to help grow the coaching program, was able to be vice president of, of the business development division within a, a coaching program called The Locker Room that has 2,000 real estate agents in less than five years. And I'm not boasting. All I'm saying is like, I had to squeeze time, right? I move quick. And, and one of the best ways to squeeze time is hiring someone to show you the path and hold you accountable to it, right? So yeah, I'm a big believer in coaches. Big believer. They squeeze time, man. They squeeze, they're well worth it. I went in through someone's P&L the other day and we, I think we pulled in another 20 to 30 grand back into their business. Dude, they paid for me for years. Yeah. Right. I mean, and they were like, don't, you don't even have to look at our P&L. We run lean. Don't even worry about it. It's like, well, let them, you know, entertain me. So they brought it in and, and we held every one of those expenses accountable. And we were able to, to not only increase the income, but decrease the expenses going out. We saved them 20, 
20 plus grand. So yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a big fan of coaches. They're that they'll, it's an investment. It's not a cost for sure. And it's a write off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. Right. That's very true. Yeah. I, yeah. I love it. Um, I, in fact, I, I need to find myself got to find the right, I'm in a weird niche where I'm like, okay, half of my stuff is being a real estate investor and half of my stuff is building an online community. Which coach do I want? Do I hire both? Do I hire a third one to tell me I suck all the time? Like I just need to hire someone like Alex Felice to just sit in my ear and be like, you're terrible. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, no, I would just, you know, it'd have to be where someone sat down with you and had that first consultation about, you know, just going deep making making david cry a little bit right and, mm. and finding out with that uh finding out with that northern what, what we talk about is that northern star right or that mission or that vision that we find so deep within you that you want to accomplish in your lifetime that anything that comes into your world you get to filter it through that right it has to run through the filter and if it's not going to help you get closer to that northern star or pull you closer to that if it's not going to align with your mission or your vision your values your beliefs your purpose then we, we, we pass it off to someone else, right? So knowing that should help you along the way of, of what activities you should be focusing most of your energy on and what you should be leveraging out. You got to have that first conversation. Well, I just have to fly out to North Carolina and pay you to make me cry. Down. <laughs> Down. We'll do it. <laughs> All right, well, Ruben, I have a couple questions. <laughs> we got a good group here, right? You, you guys do. Uh, you guys have got some good, some good players out there, some big players out there that I, I, I know a lot of them. Um, in fact, I don't know. If, so I had interviewed Shelby, and I had posted that I was going to the 10X Growth Conference, and she was like, yo, we got an Airbnb, and you should just crash. And it ended up being like, I were like 10 of us in this like three-bed, one-and-a-half bath, you know, 1100 square foot little house. And I slept on like this pull out couch thing in the back with my buddy, uh, Phil next to me, not on the couch, but like, you know, he had the other pull out, like it was super funny. Cause it was like, it's not big enough. There were people on the floor and, uh, but it was super cool to hang out with all of them. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I have a couple questions that I like to ask everyone. So we'll throw them at, throw a few at you and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, the first that I like to ask is if a young 18 to 20 year old was to walk up to you asking for advice, you only had a minute, what would you tell them? Such a broad question. I love it. To, well, my mind goes in like three different places, but I'm trying to figure out the one thing mm. that would take care of the other two or three. Um, and I think, I think, can I force this person to do something? Sure. <laughs> or just ask them <laughs> all and told stuff. Um, it'd have to, man, I would have to, I would love to tell and show that person uh, think and grow rich because mm -hmm. I want to first say, get rid of all your friends. That's what I would first want to <laughs> say. Like, you get rid of every single one of your friends and build a new network immediately. Right. But how do you do that? Right. It's a mindset change first. So, I, you know, my coach told me, sell them what they want, then give them what they need. So maybe I would structure it in a way to where the 18 year old, would, by giving them that book, will help that person uh, get more girls in some way <laughs> or fashion, right? Something that they want, right? Um, but in that book is everything you need. So if I could just slap that guy, it, it would, it would be the mindset change that comes with thinking grow rich. I think I like the get rid of all your friends. I, 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 I mean, the, the point is there that makes perfect sense. You're right. Nobody would listen to you, but man, um, some of my friends when I was 18 years old, definitely should have right. been gotten rid of. Cool. Uh, Yep. There's, I think I can think of one friend I would keep around. Right. And he's still, he's still in my circle to this day, EOD guy. Um, but, uh, amazing guy. So. Of course EOD is where it's at. I'm not. EOD. But other than that, get rid of everyone else. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And, and the crummy thing is it's hard to tell who those people are going to be. But, you know, it's funny. I look back on, on high school. Um, and, I mean, I'm going to get some, some flack for this. If any of these people actually listen to this, which I doubt. Um, I can't think, like, outside of my friends who went military or were, or were Eagle Scouts. So I was in Boy Scouts. Um, and outside of my friends who were either Eagle Scouts or went military, I can't think of anyone who made it out of our town and is doing like big things. Like all my friends that were Eagle Scouts, like I got a buddy who works for the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. I got a buddy who's like a, who's in DC working with a congressman. I got a buddy who's you know like three or four doctors and all, and another guy who's got a business he built. All these buddies of mine from like my little scout troop all went places. But like the majority of the people that I know from high school, other than that. No idea what they do. Nothing. No, yeah. They're still in town. Um, you know, nothing wrong with staying in town, but like, it's just weird to think, man, if I had known that when I was a senior in high school, I would have just not even bothered with these people. Right. Well, and I would give honestly the same advice to my friends, right. To get rid of me because yeah. I wasn't where I needed to be either. Right. To, to find a new circle. So I would give them the same advice. I mean, I'm not better than them. I didn't know who the hell I was. Yeah. So. It's a common trend at that age, right? We yeah. have like an awakening and then we all go, what the hell? Why didn't I know this sooner? Because you weren't ready. Yeah. But I often joke yeah. about what if someone had handed me rich dad, poor dad earlier, right? And then I'm talking to my mom one day and she's like, hey, asshole, I tried to get you to read that in high school. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that answers that question. That's what would have happened if someone had handed me that book earlier. Nothing. Nothing would have happened. Right. Um, exactly that's why that's why i think that was so profound that my coach said you got to sell them what they want then give them what they need yeah so you'd have to structure it in some way that that 18 year old would 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 want it right something that's going to give them what they want but truly the material and the content is exactly what they need trying to write that quote down put it in an acronym yeah (laughs) uh so to to the gear Put it on a shirt, man. It'll sell after this podcast. <laughs> I probably posted it as one of my little Instagram quotes eventually, and I'll and I'll totally cite you, and then your coach will see it and be like, "What? No!" Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is, what is one resource? You know, book, course, website, whatever. Uh, I guess you could say coach, but I think that's obvious. So something else. Uh, that you would recommend anybody getting started in real estate, either as an investor or an agent or life? Yeah. So, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad obviously comes up to mind because, again, man, everything starts in the mind first, right? So I want to say the millionaire real estate agent. Then I want to say the millionaire real estate investor. Then I want to say the bigger part. But that's so it's it's so strategic that your mind has to be ready for that, right? So I would, you know, rich dad, poor dad, or really anything that shows you that there's something bigger than yourself out there. Uh, you know, and some people, that's the Bible, right? Like, I don't know, just the big, whatever that, whatever's going to change your mindset on what investing truly is, um, then we can kind of pile on all the strategies behind it. Uh, but for me, I needed a coach. I needed someone to hold, I know that was the easy, I needed someone to, to get more specific in my world. Um, But anything that's going to tap into your mindset, shake it up and and alter what you think is real and show that the world is bigger than just you, then you can start taking in the content behind investing. I don't know if I danced around that answer. I sure feel like I did. (laughs) No, (laughs) I question. I think, I think you're spot on because you could read the millionaire real estate investor and not do anything with it if you're not ready for it. How many people have gotten that book and they love to, to say that they have it or that they've read a few pages, but they're just not ready. It's the mindset. You got to, you got to surround yourself with multipliers, people who are going to challenge you um, to think differently. And then once that happens, you, you, you'll be open to all of that. So find whatever the hell that is. (laughs) For me, it was a coach because, and, and again, my coach told me this, he said, he said, when you pay, you pay attention, right? And when I was paying that coach, you damn right I paid attention. I was freaking, pay, I was paying $500, paying her $500 a month. And at that time, I was a single dad. I was, dude, I, 
I was struggling, struggling. And that was a killer for me, but I paid attention. I paid attention to everything she said. I was able to quit UPS in 10 months after coaching with her. I thought it was going to take two years. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And you're right. I think yeah, it all, man. I mean, mindset's like the biggest piece to it. In fact, you know, I, I, yeah. there was this, someone was debating the other day. I saw um, a buddy of mine host a podcast and they were having, kind of trying to, you know, start some controversy talking about uh, Robert Kiyosaki about, oh, well, you know, I don't know. <clears throat> do you believe if any of this is true? Do you, you know, whatever. And, and you know, there's a lot of people out there who like no one can really prove who the rich dad or the poor dad was. So they don't know if it was accurate or whatever okay and, and i say that i would almost give him more credit if the whole thing was made up because the ability to craft a story that compelling and that perfect for st telling the story to me is yeah much cooler than if it was true um and i don't really care you know like whatever because that book exactly it's probably the only book that i've ever listened to like five times so i would ask the question i would say okay uh great real or fake how much of an impact has that book made yeah. And then stop. Cause at that point it doesn't, what does it matter? Yeah. What does it matter? I mean, I honestly, I never even thought to ask that question, but damn, what does it matter? No. What is the impact? It, how many people that you've had on this podcast mentioned that book? Enough that I eventually just stopped counting that as their answer. And said, Find another <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah. you can't even, you almost can't even scale the impact. No, I can. In fact, when I go home this next month, I need to, I told the guy I had on here the other day, cause we were talking about, uh, having an impact and how you may never even know that you impacted that person. And it kind of hit me. And I was like, yeah, you know, I know the name of the, ex I can sit down. It, I was going to be a, he, he talked me into Amway. Amway didn't work out for me. You know, it is what it is, but I was after the coaching side of things. Like I was, that's what sold me on Amway, not the products. And, and you know, it, it didn't really work out for me at all, but, but he sat me down and he said, here's Rich Dad Poor Dad. You need to read this. And I said, ah, I'm a Marine. I don't read. I don't like reading. And he said, okay, here's a disc. Listen to it while you drive around in your little recruiter mobile. And I did. And that is the single moment that like everything else, within three months I bought a, uh, my first investment property. And I mean, things have just snowballed since then. And I need to sit, I need to take, you know, like hit him up out of nowhere. It's been like three years and just be like, you know, take him out to coffee. Like, hey, I just want to let you know. I don't know if you see any of this on social media, but it's all from you. Thanks. Yeah, and that's that's level one impact, right? Where you've bought your first property. Now, who did it? Who did that impact, right? Does that uh, start impacting your family? Does that start impacting people who are looking at you as an example? Did that start impacting the person who actually moved into that property who needed a home? Did that start impacting your mindset on this podcast where now freaking tons of people are listening to it? I mean, that just it just it compounds. So that would be the question is, is what, what kind of impact do you think this book has made? And then yeah. step away, walk out of the room and leave and have them talk about that, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't comment because I was like, eh, I'm not going to get involved in all this. But, uh, yeah. you know, whatever. I don't care. Um, I did reach out yeah. to him the other day. Uh, I don't think it's going to work out. But, like, I know a guy who knows a guy that is one of his coaches. And I was like, can you shoot him an email? Try to – so I was hoping that – I would be able to get a hold of him before I leave because I'm currently stationed on the base where he retired from. And I want to be like, Hey, you know, I'm overlooking where you used to work. Uh, let's get you on my show and talk about it. But uh, I don't, it's not the end of my world if I don't hear back from him anytime soon. So it'd be cool though. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, Google a picture of where you work and say, Hey, I'm looking at the place where you used to work. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can really be Every, anywhere and pull that Everybody screen. tag him in this. Um, I, that might actually work because I've tagged him in stuff before and had his account comment. So someone's at least paying attention. Uh, exactly. All right. So before we wrap this up, is there anything you'd like to add? Any parting advice or big ideas that we may have missed? Uh, well, um, I'll just say this. So, uh, so quadrant, right? So there was, um, there was somebody who, who kind of broke this down for me and built out a quadrant and they added a division symbol in one, uh, a, a minus symbol in one, a plus symbol in one, and a multiplication symbol in the other. And one of the coolest things, and this guy was a coach, oh my gosh, everyone's a freaking coach. I'm just saying it works. That's your network. Um, he, that's my network. Yeah, exactly. And he, he, had, he runs a very successful coaching program. 
Um, and he had us look at that and basically add everyone in our world in one of those quadrants. So are they dividing your life? Are they subtracting from your life? Are they adding or are they multiplying your life? And, and obviously the people, who, and I'll just make this real quick, the people who are dividing your life, just get rid of them. I mean, we're done with those. Um, the, the people who are taking away from your life, that's when you have a conversation with that person. And you basically say, I want you to add to my life. I want you in my life. Um, I think you'd be a great asset in my life and I'll be a great asset in your life, but you got to quit bringing the negativity. If you do, you automatically start dividing my life, right? And then you get rid of the ad, the, the positive people, man, those people right there, those are your cheerleaders. You want them around. They're your positive people. They keep you uplifted. Those are great people. But the one quadrant that you need to fill up and have and be very purposeful on, on doing your best to fill up and be intentional about filling up is that multiplication quadrant. The people who challenge you, the people who who see more in you than you see in yourself, the ones who just make you feel uncomfortable when you even walk in the room, right? Because you know they're about to test you. Like it's though that quadrant right there is so damn important. So um, that to me was super powerful. And I guess us talking about the quadrant and Robert Kiyosaki just kind of popped in my mind. And so that would be the last piece of advice. Draw it out, add people in there, have real fierce conversations and and start filling up that that multiplication multiplier symbol uh, uh quadrant immediately that's cool today <laughs> yeah i'm all about i'm all about a network but i never heard it described that way and uh that's and that's honestly that's what i've been slowly working through in my life and uh it, it's weird so the military has some really solid people um but you know a lot of them aren't aren't going where i plan to go right and so i'm kind of having that come to come to jesus moment as they talk about where okay now who do i keep around who do i transition out and as i hang out every time i hang out with someone high level even if we're just having a coffee right and like just not even talking about business there's just something i get out of that that i wouldn't get out of you know having coffee with one of my peers in the military who just bought a new bmw for no reason um because the mentality is just different and right yeah I couldn't agree. Except I don't think that I ever have a coffee with one of those guys and it doesn't turn into business or real estate or whatever. It's, it's amazing the stuff that comes up. Right. And that's, that's, I mean, because they want substance in the conversation. They don't want a hollow, we're really, we're talking, but we're not talking about anything conversation. They want to make sure that their time is being filled up with very purposeful conversation. It's going to help them grow their world and, and essentially help you grow yours. They want substance in the conversation. That's why it ends up going to those places, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So Mr. Proven by Ruben, how can people yes. get hold of you? So Proven by Ruben on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and I'm sure there's more. Um, but those are the main ones I play on, uh, especially Instagram, follow my stories, comment, ask questions. I tell my day, I show my day through, through stories. So, um, that's the way you get, I could be transparent and you guys can be interactive because I like that feedback. Um, but yeah, those are the best. Oh, and YouTube, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, other than that, hit me up. I'm very, I'm, 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 I'm someone you can reach very easily. There's a word for that but I just went that route. So uh, just hit me up on those social media platforms at Proven by Ruben. R-U-B-E-N. Hell, buy one of these shirts. I'll show you how to buy one of these shirts So <laughs> for your state. There you go. I might need to get one of those for my state when I figure out what state that's going to be. <laughs> if I was to buy one for the state right now, it'd be Hawaii. And then two weeks from now, it would be something else. But <laughs> um, whatever starts the conversation, man. Yeah, you know? I like it. I, I do I do like those shirts. It's very simple, simple and very obvious what the message is. Mm-hmm. Right For on, sure. Right hey Ruben, I really appreciate you joining us today. Uh just of course. Thanks. Thank you, man. I appreciate you building this platform for others to listen to, get stuff out of and take action on. So thank you. It's been fun.